Finally, we also need to realize that when Christianity comes onto the scene in the Roman Empire, it is not stepping into a void in terms of religion, but in fact is stepping into an unbelievably complicated reality of religion. Religions of all the conquered nations are still in evidence within both in Rome and within the various cities that have been conquered. They've both held on to their own religions and have adopted and adopted the religions of either the Greeks or the Romans. It's in the Roman period that the veneration of the emperor as a god himself begins to take off as well. And if you read the book of Revelation, you see that there's glimpses of that. That it's the, it's the Roman emperor who now takes upon himself the position of God is alluded to, particularly in the letters to the churches. We, we need to see is that this was a polytheistic space. This was a space where there were many gods. And in fact, in the Roman era, what we also see is that unless you connected with those gods, you couldn't even work in your particular job. If you were a stonemason, unless you were prepared to also worship the, the god of stonemasonry, you couldn't be part of being the stonemason. There was a direct connection between what is religion and what is life. There was no separation between them. And so into the midst of this comes Christianity, which says, no, there aren't many gods. There is but one God. There is but one God. And He has come to earth in the form of Jesus Christ, there to redeem, there to restore, there to renew, there to give us the example of life. And that God is now still present on earth through the person of the Holy Spirit, who is with us and will encourage us and teach us and direct us. These were all new concepts for, the, for, for Rome. These were concepts that would go against the things that they believed. It would go against the, the pantheon, pantheon meaning the, the all gods, the, the collection of gods that they had. And of course the Roman gods were paralleled in the Greek. And so we've had now the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire over many hundreds of years. And so when Christianity comes into, that, into the midst of that, just like Judaism, it would have been seen with much skepticism. Who are these people peddling one God when we know that that's not true, when there are many gods, when there are many different ways in which, in which we connect with God? There are many different sacrifices one has to make. And of course, the Christian insistence that they would worship no other gods for whatever reason of course, would immediately set a target on each of their heads. It's a polytheistic environment. It's one which is seen so clearly within, for example, the environment when Paul goes to speak on the Mars Hill, or sometimes known as the Areopagus in the Acts of the Apostles. When he goes there and he goes past all the statues of the various gods, and then he meets with these philosophers. And the interesting part is, of course, these philosophers are really not connected to any of the gods that he's walked past. They're Epicureans and Stoics. And so we see that we not only have a polytheistic environment, but we also have one which is a philosophical or religious philosophical environment. The, the, the Stoics and the Epicureans actually having, instead of having a particular god, have rather a particular mindset of how we live life which is a connection of the spiritual and the physical. It's into the midst of all of this that Christianity comes. And it's the reason as well why the New Testament spends so much time talking about God and talking about who Jesus is in relationship to God. Because it was an environment and a time in which there were many gods and many versions and frameworks within God. But it was also a time, I think, in fact, where many people had begun to realize that so many of the things that they worshipped were just that. They were things. They weren't God. The gods were both good and evil. The gods seemed to be as, as likely to do something to harm you as they would to help you. And for many of them also felt that God really was so separated and removed, or the gods were so separated and removed from the world, that they really were no good at all. And so we see that by the time Jesus comes in, the environment may be polytheistic, but it's really religious rather than spiritual. What Jesus comes to offer and what Christianity breaks into this world with is spirituality, is an ability to link and connect with the real relationship with God.
You can imagine that going from those empty, ritual, traditional frameworks to one which was about relationship and connection and interaction and communication would be the very thing that would make people's lights and minds come alive. Christianity grew because of the environment in which it lived. It was polytheist, but effectively was one which didn't give access to God. All it did was try to numb the pain. What Christianity offered was not to numb the pain, but to know that someone walks you with you through the pain, and that the way in which we live in that pain is the creation of the kingdom of God here on earth. What an amazing difference that would have made to the people who heard it. 